What's up, Fragrant World? Welcome back to another Stay Fresh production. My name is Justin Copeland, and on this channel, Stay Fresh Productions, we talk about everything fragrance related. If you like that kind of content, or you want to learn more about fragrances, or you just want something good to look at. Something good to look at? Who do you think you are? Then please consider subscribing and make sure you hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And please hit that like button. It really does help with my content across the YouTube platform. Of course, if you like the video, please hit the button. Today we're talking about part two of my full collection series. Now, if you're wondering, where's part one? You're not a real member of the squad. That's what it sounds like because the real members saw this video, which was my 50 fragrances in five minutes, which acted as the first part to my collection. So if you missed that video, check it out. This is part two. We're moving on without you, but I do encourage you to check out that video if you're interested. So we're gonna continue on. I'm gonna dive right into this. This is essentially gonna be a slightly slowed down version of that video. I'm gonna describe the fragrances very briefly. I might talk a little bit about do I like it, how I feel about it in general, and we'll just keep it moving. So I'm gonna basically continue where I left off. I did this whole top shelf in the previous video and I did, you know, maybe a good third of this second shelf. So we're gonna start about halfway through here. So I got two fragrances from the house of Tonino Lamborghini. Yes, the car maker. They do have a separate fragrance sub brand, so to speak. This one is called Essenza, which is nice. It's kind of like this tropical, aquatic, citrusy, aromatic scent. Very, very light. It reminds me of Pacific Rock Moss from Goldfield and Banks. This one is called Invincible. It is a clone of Creed Aventus, and it is probably, it's one of the worst clones of Creed Aventus I've come across. Not that it smells bad, it actually smells very nice and the quality is decent, but it is so light, it's hard to detect, period, at all. And it really isn't that close to Aventus. It's more green and woody. It's a nice scent, it's just completely unremarkable. Okay, we got from the House of Authenticity Perfumes, their flagship fragrance, just Authenticity. This is a citrus, aromatic, musky scent. Very basic, kind of generic, but smells really good and has ridiculous performance for a fresh fragrance. We have At The Barbers from Maison Margiela. Smells like shaving foam with leather. And that's literally what it says on the label. We have one fragrance from Coach, which is Coach from In Platinum. I did talk about this recently in some video, I don't remember now. Really beautiful, kind of fresh, spicy, but kind of fruity and vanillic and warm. Very nice duality. We have Dolce & Gabbana, the one odor parfum. I don't need to say anything about this. We have Dolce & Gabbana, light blue, pour home, oh intense. I uh, haven't worn this in a while, but this is a great scent for the summertime. It is very playful and aquatic, has a little bit of a fruity nature, kind of salty, really pleasant. And we have a fragrance from Bulgari, which I used to really like, actually for a short time. I've only had it a few months and I liked it until I got Cartier L'Enval, which smells similar to it, but much more rich in what I wish this was. So now I don't really care for this. It has a beautiful opening, but then it gets so wispy after about an hour and it's just boring vetiver. That's all it kind of dries down to. We have Roberto Cavalli. This is Womo. I'm still getting to know this scent, kind of like an aromatic, I think there's honey in here but it's fresh, maybe a little floral. I'm still getting to know it. It's very light, but it's pleasant. I gotta give it some more wear. We got Mont Blanc Legend Night. Basically kind of smells like uh, Armani Code Profumo, so to speak. It's, you know, a little aromatic, but it's sweet and warm, kind of ambery. We have two from Pete and Pedro, which are both clones. I'm not gonna be talking about a ton of clones, by the way. On the next shelf down, I have a ton of clone fragrances. I might skip over most of them. Uh, we have King, which is their clone of Green Irish Tweed. Smells kind of like it. It's maybe a more modern version, perhaps a more mass appealing version of it, and maybe not so much depth. And this is Hero, which is their clone of Aqua Dijon from Armani. Again, kind of a more updated version of that DNA. Smells great, 
that has maybe a little bit more woods in here and definitely has better performance than the current formulation of Aqua Dijon. We have Lacoste, Jean L1212, whatever the heck it's called. This is okay. I've talked about it before. It's like a fruity, tropical, musky scent, kind of fresh, very juvenile. I haven't worn it that much. Maybe when summer comes back around, I'll give it another shot, but I'm not impressed by it. We have Calvin Klein. This is one of my favorites. This is Euphoria Intense. Sweet, fresh, warm. It's apparently a little bit of oud in there. It's kind of gingery, but sweet, you know, kind of creamy and smooth. Very seductive, very good scent. My only Versace scent currently, this is Arrow's Flame. I've talked about it in my Seductive Fragrances video. I really do enjoy this. I think I like it more than the original, but I do want to try the Eau de Parfum or the Parfum, whatever it is. I want to try that one. It does smell good. I don't love the opening so much, but as it dries, it kind of becomes a more mature Versace Eros. We have four fragrances from the House of Seven Virtues. This is a mistake. Okay. Oh, I'm glad none of those caps came off. We got grapefruit lime. Don't remember exactly what this smells like. I haven't smelled it in a while. It actually has a um, kind of a herbaceousness to it. There's basil in here, which is actually a really nice addition. Vetiver Elmi. This one smells very designery. It's kind of resinous with that Elmi quality. It's a little fresh. Not a woody vetiver. Has a sweetness to it. A little lemony. It's nice. We have patchouli citrus. This one. It doesn't really smell like patchouli. It has a kind of a sweet floral nature to it, but it smells great. Really beautiful, perfectly unisex. And this is my favorite one, Vanilla Woods, which is this sweet, almost like a caramel apple kind of vibe. Really gorgeous, very beautiful scent. And also a decent performance out of this too, out of all of them really. Last one in this row, we have Moschino Toy Boy. This is a very modern, Kind of spicy, fresh, woody rose. A little bit unusual. When you smell it from the atomizer, it's not the most pleasant scent to me. I find that I don't reach for this much because I smell it from here and I'm like, okay, I'm not in the mood for that kind of weirdness. But when you spray it on, it really opens up and it's like really nice. Not everyone likes it, but I do enjoy it. It's quite a unique scent, which is a breath of fresh air in the designer world. All right, next we got all the fragrances currently from Icon de Parfum, an indie house based out of Phoenix, Arizona. We have Glass Quartz, which was my favorite for a while. Very simple, all the fragrances here are very simple. They only advertise maybe three or four notes per fragrance. I don't know if that is the full note breakdowns, but they do smell quite simple. This one's like tonka bean and orange. It's like mandarin tonka bean, sweet, fresh, citrusy, really nice. This one is called 623, which is the area code down there. This is like plum and cactus. Sweet, kind of juicy plum with a little bit of a green, a little woody, it's nice. And then we got this one, which is new to me, Baseline, which is probably my favorite one currently. I don't remember the notes in here exactly but it's kind of like this sweet green scent. It is a little unusual, which I like, but still very appealing. It's hard to describe, I'll have to get back to that one. I gotta give it some more wear. This is the newest fragrance that they've come out with. This is their women's fragrance called Rumors. I haven't actually worn this yet. I don't even know if I've sprayed it. Really. I did spray it. I don't remember exactly what's in here, but I will give this some wear and I'll get back to you. Ladies, this might be one you want to check out. All of his fragrances are quite inexpensive too, which is nice. From the house of Raw Spirit, we have Citadel. This is Vetiver. This is kind of, uh, almost has a Tom Ford Grey Vetiver vibe. It's nice, it's just really light. We have Antonio Banderas Blue Seduction. Good scent. I know Andrea, my good friend Andrea from Curly Scents finds this one very attractive on men. I have to really give it some more wear in the heat. It's kind of this fresh aquatic with melon. It's nothing special, but it is very pleasant. It doesn't last that long, but I love the color of this juice. I just want to like swim in that. It's beautiful. I'm gonna move down to the next shelf here. We have a ton of Parfums Vintage, many of which I'm not really gonna spend a lot of time on, some of which I'll probably skip over. This first one up is Ila Tropical Privé. This is their Oh, this is good. 
I love this fragrance. This is a clone of Creed Virgin Island Water, but they boosted the lime here. Beautiful fragrance, juicy, mouthwatering coconut, rum, lime, so good. Great performance too. This is Imbue, which is their clone of Gucci Poron 2, the original formulation, and it smells wonderful. Violet, kind of a black tea, cinnamon, very, very calming scent. Next one up is Aqua Intense, which is their clone of of uh, Paco Urban Invictus Aqua 2016. And this is also fantastic. Spot on, it smells even better than the original from what I remember. I used to have a bottle, I don't have it anymore. And next one up here, this is Exaltant Le Musque, which, uh, the intense version, which is a clone of Bleecker Street from Bond Number no. 9. It is very good. I think I even like it a little bit more than Bleecker Street. It's a little smoother. And I got a ton of stuff from their pineapple vintage line. The only one I'm gonna talk about is Emperor. I have all the rest like Maximus and Colossus and all these other ones and uh, Napoleon, but the original EDP is my favorite one. So that's all I'm gonna say from that. I'm gonna save you some time. Uh, from our moth, we have Club de Nuit, Siage, their clone of Creed's uh, Silver Mountain Water, which is new for 2020 and they nailed it. It's scary, but they nailed it. At least in my opinion, you don't need Silver Mountain Water. This outperforms it by hours and hours and it smells just like it. They got that inky metallic note, which is hard to uh, get that a lot of clones don't have, but they got it in here. We have their clone of Millicent Imperial, which is called the Club Nain Wheat Milestone. That musky, aquatic, fruity, Slightly sea salty scent, a little bit more fruity with this one. It doesn't have the powdery iris that the original has, which some people might prefer. I might highlight a couple more fragrances from Parfums Vintage that are really nice. This one is called Obsession Enter Diet. I've talked about it before. This is a clone of Roberto Cavalli Noble Woods, which is from their like Privé line, their more high-end line. I think it's hard to find. Gorgeous. Kind of a sweet resinous woods, maybe with some rose or something. It's so good. It smells fantastic, really nice. And is that all I wanna talk about? Yeah, they got so many, I'm gonna skip all of these. Also from our moth, we got Trade and Wheat. They're cloning Green Irish Tweed. Nothing remarkable, not my favorite clone, but probably the best one out there, especially for the money you pay for it. From Alexandria Fragrances, we got Hot Fizz 1984 Intense, probably my favorite from the house so far. In terms of the originals, beautiful fragrance. I've talked about it before has this kind of Middle Eastern resinous oody vibe, coffee, caramel, vanilla, and it's beautiful. It just sits a little two dimensional for me. When it dries, it just gets flat, but it smells great. We have Highlands, which is their clone of Creed Bois de Portugal. It smells pretty much just like it. Again, it's just a little bit two dimensional. We have Counterattack, which is their clone of, I think, Victor and Rolf Antidote. It smells great. It's kind of like this modern, sweet fougere kind of scent. It has a more of like a fruitiness almost, less on like the mossy, woody side of things. But yet again, falls a little flat. And then we have Italian Caramel, which is a clone of some Zerzhoff fragrance. I don't remember the name of it, and I don't like this fragrance. It, it is way too sweet. So sweet, who would wear this? We got a bunch of fragrances from the House of Authenticity Parfums. I think I might have all of their fragrances. One of the newer ones, Silver Lux. This is like coconut, vanilla, maybe some woods or something. I'm still getting to know the newer ones. It smells great. Really nice stuff, very kind of seductive. Great performance, like all of them. We got Lome Riche, which is kind of almost barbershoppy in a way, but more creamy, sweet, very clean smelling. Very good stuff. These are probably my two favorites currently. We got Romeo Blue, which I just featured. This one's really nice too. Still getting to know it, it's brand new. This is kind of cardamom, fresh, spicy. Oh, this is good, it's unique too. I haven't really smelled anything quite like this. Really nice, I'm gonna give this some more wear. But I recommend all of Authenticity's stuff. They are, again, very concentrated, they smell great. So, you know, they're gonna last a long time and they're gonna smell good all day long. We got Summer Vibes, this is the updated version. I haven't actually given this a wearing yet. I sprayed it on paper, I'm not a fan of it. I think I almost like the original more, but I wasn't crazy about the original either. It smells a little bit like a cleaner, 
in a way, at least to my nose, from the atomizer. When you spray it on, it opens up a bit, but I don't love it. I gotta give it a wearing on the skin, though. We got Barbershop, which is their quintessential barbershop scent. Very soapy, creamy, fresh kind of scent. I gotta give it some more wearing. When I first tried it, I didn't like it. It smelled a little too soapy, but I liked it from the atomizer just now, so I might give it a wear at some point. And we have Urban King. This one does kind of remind me a little bit of Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum. Not exactly, does not come off as a clone, but it's in that ballpark if you're looking for a reference. Very aromatic, woody, smells a little bit blue, but has a smooth scent to it. Really good stuff, and again, great performance. Ooh, we got so many. I wanted to maybe get to my niche fragrances, but we'll probably save that for a part three. We have Infatuation from King of Spades brand. This is a black owned brand. This fragrance is really pleasant, very well blended. It's like a aromatic mandarin with sweet, maybe tonka bean and some other things in there. It's a basic scent profile. It has decent uh, longevity, doesn't project all that well, but smells really great. Probably something that'll get you compliments. It's an easy to like scent. It does have some decent quality, but nothing special, but smells great. And the bottle's kind of cool. Good quality bottle. Uh, this one, this is a fragrance I cannot wear. This is from PK Perfumes, Paul Kyler. This is called Maderas de Oriente Oscuro. I don't even want to smell it, honestly. It, it doesn't smell bad. It is just such a potent, concentrated scent. It's like burnt wood but with like caramel and it is just so rich I I don't even want to smell it it just it I can't do it it smells good it smells good but it is so strong it is too strong we have a few fragrances from the house of Oriza El Legrand which is a very old French house um, they kind of specialize in these more what you would consider like old world fragrances. Even some of their newer releases pay homage to older styles. These two are very special. They're incense based fragrances. This one, Malaga Santa, smells like frankincense and benzoin. It's like a resinous incense. Basically smells like a church. If you've been into a Catholic church, this is it in a bottle. We have Oracion, which is like prayer. This is a beautiful, very unique scent. Gosh, it smells gorgeous. It's very unique. It's a little unusual. It smells like wet stone with lilies and a little bit of incense in the background. White floral, kind of watery, wet stone-like incense. It's very different, but it's very beautiful, very transportive. And the last fragrance we'll talk about is the fragrance that I also cannot wear. I cannot wear this fragrance. At least I haven't figured out how to be comfortable. This is called Nefertiti. This is from a house called Chatillon Lou, which I always feel self-conscious about saying because I don't know if I'm saying that right. I can smell this one though. This one is just so strange. It has a ton of immortel, almost like this syrupy, maple syrupy, but curry vibe to it. Has ivy, which is a strange green quality. There's even some oud in here. It's syrupy, kind of sweet, but green, but also curry-like, savory. Very interesting. I do love the story behind it. It pays homage to one of my favorite songs by one of my favorite composers named Wayne Shorter. The song is called Nefertiti recorded with the Miles Davis Quintet on an album by the same name, paying homage to that, which I dig. But this scent, I applaud it for being so damn unique, but I cannot wear this. It is so bizarre. Anyway, that's all we're gonna do for now. I'm actually gonna move over and film the next part now, but I'm gonna stop the video here. If you wanna see part three, leave a like on this video. If this video gets, let's say, I'm just gonna put it out there, a thousand likes. If we get a thousand likes on this video, I'll show you part three. I'm gonna film it nonetheless. If you wanna see it, let me know. Otherwise, it's just gonna sit in the archives. So if you have not yet subscribed, please consider doing so. Would love to have you as a part of the Fresh Squad if you wanna join the Fresh Fam and help me continue to do this on a regular basis and pay my bills and eat. Check out the link to my Patreon down below. Consider joining the Fresh Fam. All the info is down there where you can get exclusive content and again, support me as a content creator. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one. And buy this shirt. And today it has a bunch of new colors. They're beautiful. See ya.